So we we'll sing, we place you at the highest place. We place you at the highest place. For you are the great high priest. We Good morning and welcome to worship. Wherever you're joining us from, we welcome you. This day is a very special day in the calendar, the Christian calendar, a day when we remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and the significance of that entry. Our theme this morning is regime change. And as we explore that theme together, my hope is that we'll recognize the importance of actually surrendering to Christ and allowing him to reign in our lives. We cannot live in two kingdoms. 
we must live in the kingdom of God and our Christ. Let me read some verses to you from Psalm 150. And as we enter into this time of praise and celebration, can you remember those of us who went to Jerusalem and as we, we came down the mountainside and look across into Jerusalem we, and we went down into the garden, we, we can remember and sing, imagine what Jesus saw. He says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. That is, God dwells within us. You know, this is just a building. We are the people, the building of God. Praise God in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Can you think of something that God has done recently for you? Praise him for that. Praise him for his surpassing greatness, he says. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. No trumpets this morning? Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and the dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. That's exactly what we're going to do this morning. So as we enter into this time of praise and worship, let everything that is within you give praise to God. Do not allow anything or anyone to inhibit you, but let the joy of knowing your Lord enable you to say, Lord, I just want to worship you. Let it come from within and praise him this morning. We're going to ask the group to come and to lead us, you know, in our first song. There's a sweet anointing. God is here, my sisters, my brothers. God is here this morning. Let's worship him together. Let's stand as we, we sing, there's a sweet anointing.
let's come to God in prayer. You can take your seats, you can stand, you can kneel as you feel is appropriate as we come to him this morning. Let's take to heart the words of the song we have just listened to or sung. God is here this morning. You have come with burdens. Lay them at his feet. You know when you come in from shopping and you put your shopping down? All those things that you have acquired in the past, whenever that past was, I want to invite you this morning to come and lay them at the foot of the cross. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to the living God who calls you and loves you, from whom you can hide nothing. But in spite of everything, where you have been, what you have done, he welcomes you. Come to him this morning. Father, we come not to confess that we are worthy, but to acknowledge our need of you. To express our gratitude for what you have done and continues to do for us. When we think of your goodness, our souls cry out and say, thank you, Lord. All that we have, all that we are and hope to be are to be found in you. And this morning as we come, Father, to give you thanks and we look back in time and reflect on that period when Jesus entered symbolically into Jerusalem, announcing the inauguration of a new kingdom. We pray that you will give us understanding as to the full meaning of that and to help us to know that we are indeed, because we have faith, accepted your word and are walking but with you by your spirit, we are part of that kingdom. And that as kingdom people, we have a message. We have a light to shine in the dark world. And so to that end, Father, we pray, Holy Spirit, you know just where we are. I'm asking, Holy Spirit, that you will just move among us. Speak to us individually. Comfort our hearts. Speak into our minds the truth of the word. Grant us the courage to let go of those things that have, are preventing us from advancing with you and to take hold of those truths. We come this morning, Father, with the world, as it were, on our shoulders. And we come to the one who is able to give us guidance and wisdom. We come with our own issues that sometimes overwhelmed us. But we lay them at your feet and we look to you this morning. We ask that you would forgive us, cleanse us, and renew us. And help us to arise as though a mighty army with praise on our lips and a determination to walk by faith. Hear our prayers and have mercy upon us. For we ask these things for your kingdom and your glory's sake. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And help us not to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. On Friday, we, we laid to rest one of our long-serving members, Doral Taylor, the sister of Inet Bailey, 
and all that family who've been part of this expression of the body of Christ for many years. There was sadness, but reflections of thanksgiving and joy. And when someone we love is removed from our circle, it is hard. But whenever someone is born into the kingdom, it is such a celebration. But on the other hand, we know they're just gone for a little while, and someday we'll meet again. This morning, we want to welcome Emmanuel, Abigail's husband, who has traveled over from India to be with his wife. And Emmanuel, you want to stand? You want to come and just say something? Uh, or, or you don't have to. Um, but, but just come and, and, and to, to just say a word. Um, Emmanuel Joseph, um, we, we, we have prayed with Abigail that things would go. And here is the living result of our prayer. Emmanuel is here this morning. Let me take a minute to thank you all for praying for us. Um, I came to this country on 28th of this month. It's been uh, like a few days. But I understand the Lord has been so good to me and good to Abigail and good to all of us. He has been uh, keeping me safe and sound. And I'm thankful uh, to you all for that. Thank you so much for all your prayers. And um, I am humbly reminded of um, uh, something that makes me really emotional. Around 25 years ago, one fine night, I was a college student and I was not sleeping that night. Somehow the, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't resting well, I was awake. At that time I heard my, my father praying, praying at night. It was like two o'clock or uh, two and a, a half maybe. Uh, he was awake and he started praying. And while praying for all of us, his children, he was praying that this, my boy, should move to a country, should move to a foreign country and be there and have his life, do his ministry um, and become an excellent servant of God. Now, he had this thought from my very birth because I'm, I was born as an answer to a prayer. I have six sisters. All of them are older to me. And I'm the youngest one. And my parents always wanted a son. And one after another, they had girl children. So they earnestly prayed for a son by promising to God that that son will be given to the Lord for his ministry. And from those days on, his prayer has been the same. Lord, I'm giving this son to you. Use him. Take him to places. Take him to the ends of the earth. And here I am today because of that prayer. And luckily, God, or fortunately I would say, God let me, um, I mean, God didn't allow me to sleep that night so that I would listen to that prayer. So during those days, he had such a habit of getting up in the early morning hours and praying for everyone. He was such a great uh, intercessory prayer warrior. Now, last April on the 4th, he passed away. And after two days, today is second, on 3rd and 4th, we have his first anniversary, and I'm thankful to God uh, for his life, for his prayers. And um, before his passing away, uh, almost a year ago, he said, or he prophesied, I would say, that me and Abigail would move to this country. During those days, as he was talking to us, we had no clue where we were moving to. Of course, we hadn't even applied to the, uh, to the hospital where she was working currently. But he said, you will be moving to that country, you will have children over there, you will have a ministry, you will have a life together. And let me tell you, this is, this is a gentle reminder to me and to Abigail, it's about God's faithfulness. 
as Prophet Jeremiah says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And today let me not take a lot of time here. Um, I'll see all of you uh, in the later days. And if God willing, uh, and of course uh, that's what God's will is, we will meet uh, again. Thank you so much for this time. Well, we're going to sing a song of welcome, an opportunity for us to say good morning to each other and to greet each other. Let's ask you to come and as we sing this song. King of Kings, Majesty. And let's say good morning to each other as we sing. Morning, church. Good morning. I'm reading from Luke 19, 
verses 28 to 44. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he set two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, who are you tying it? The Lord needs it, he said. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and Jesus put and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. Then he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives. The old crowd of disciples began, jo be began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is he, the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you even, you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground and you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to City Road Baptist Church. Welcome in the sanctuary and welcome online. Welcome to our uh, Palm Sunday, the first of the Holy Week, leading up to the crucifixion of Christ. So welcome. And we just pray that everyone will be blessed, you know, by being here today and joining in the service. Okay. Uh, it's also our family service. It's the first um, Sunday of the month, so welcome. We welcome you in the name of the Lord, our Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, our Savior. You know, we, we always have to remember that we are in his presence. And we say a special welcome again to Manuel. I know you've already been welcome, but, you know, we've heard so much and we've waited, and Abigail has been such... You know, she came in and she's just been part of us, the family, so welcome. It's good to see you. Also, welcome to Blanche, who's visiting us today with her friend from a previous church. So welcome, and we pray you will be blessed. Okay. We well, welcome to all those who have been away because of illness. Good to see you, Laurel. We know you've not been well. It's good to see you. And all those who've been away for other reasons, we just welcome you and pray the Lord will continue to minister to you as you worship with us. We thank all those who have been um, helping in during the week and who are here today supporting and serving 
you know, the Lord. Because whatever we do, we do it for the Lord, and it's not for our benefit. But, you know, it doesn't matter how menial it is, you know, we do it for the Lord. We welcome you, Pastor Gordon, as you bring the word today. And, you know, we wait to hear what the Lord has laid on your heart. Um, housekeeping, please, if you haven't done so, can you make sure that your mobile is on silence or you've turned it off? Please. Fire alarm is not due to um, be tested, so if it does go off, wherever you are in the building, you'll be escorted by the safest route. Okay. Tithes and offering, um, you can give that, um, you know, electronically or if you want to make a donation. And the information of the church's website, uh, if you go to that, and then you'll get the bank details on that. Okay. And newsletter, there's quite a lot of information on the newsletter. Um, so please make sure you've got one and that you do read it because I'm not going through everything. So say today is our uh, family service and it's Palm Sunday. And then this evening we have um, the first of the Bible studies here at 6.30 in the sanctuary, okay? And if you look at the program all week, we will be having these studies. Some are on Zoom, but Sunday and Thursday will be here in the sanctuary at 6.30, okay? And um, Monday is fasting and uh, prayer and fasting, at, and that starts at um, 11 o'clock. Okay. Um, Next Friday, Good Friday, the service is actually at the Methodist Church, and that's down the bottom, uh, going towards that end of City Road. That's where they, and we start at 10.30. Okay, so that's next Friday, the service is there, and we're back here again on Sunday for Easter Sunday service. We will be having communion on Thursday after the Bible study there. Okay. And there's just a, uh, a, you know, an elaboration of, uh, of, of what is happening. Tuesday, the 11th of April, is the actual anniversary date, centenary anniversary of the church. We will be meeting here between 11 o'clock in the morning and 3 p.m. And then on the 16th, we will have the Thanksgiving service. On Tuesday, please uh, you know, um, do try and encourage others to come along. We will be having finger foods and we would and cakes, you know, just uh, light refreshments. So please, we would appreciate any donation that you can bring for Tuesday. Um, so do invite people to come along. And on the 16th, we, as I say, we will be having a, a bring and share meal. So on Sunday the 16th, um, we will be bring, you know, bringing our meal to share, which we've done in the past for those who've been here. There are some leaflets um, for you to take. Please take them and distribute them. There is a list also of the different of roads. Uh, you don't have to just limit yourself to those roads. Wherever you are going, shops, wherever you meet, please um, you know, hand the leaflets out and encourage them to pass them on as well and the information. Okay. And also, can I just remind you about the... Um, the form for the day trip on the 22nd of um, July. I think Les Marie will be collecting in the information on the 8th of this month. So please make sure you've put you know, your choice of venue that you would like to go on that day. And can I just say, um, I did put up some information regarding, because we do need to have people who are first aid trained within, because we have a lot of events and also you know, we've had people in the church, and I know uh, a couple of people have signed up to that, so I would like to say thank you, um, because we've got involved with the uh, neighborhood community, so there, it saves us having to put those training on. And I will see um, those who need to do level three training, safeguarding afterwards. Uh, I've spoken to Lester. So just the memories of the verse, Pastor will do. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Pauline. Just to say that they are just a sample of the, the leaflets over there, but tomorrow, as of 3 o'clock, all the leaflets will be here. I have ordered 5,000 leaflets, and we are looking for each one to take a road 
the list is there for you to put your name against it. I will deliver these into these roads. And as Perlin said, don't just limit it to those roads. We want as many people to come during our celebrations, even if we have to just you know, stay out there on the lawn, wherever. It's going to be a great time. And uh, I want to say uh, on the, the 16th, um, one of our past ministers, Michael um, Bonser, some of you may remember him, he will be preaching here uh, on the 16th. So invite your friends to come along. It's going to be an amazing day. But on the 11th, we're going to be open from t 11 o'clock through to 3 o'clock, and we're going to have cakes and teas and coffees, and just, just, just come in, take time to pray, bring someone along, someone to talk to you about the history of the church. Just take some time to come along and share during that day. Let's bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. you for all the things you have done. Lord, we give you our gifts to you, but it's nothing compared to what you have given us. So, Father, we are grateful that you are with us, and you will multiply these gifts for, all, for, your, for your kingdom. So, Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant It's time for our, our memory verse. I wonder how many of you can remember what the memory verse is for today. One, Diane, Michael, and oh, wonderful, wonderful. Now, I would like you to determine who might tell us, be generous, who you're going to allow to, to tell us. Okay, go ahead then. Um, Claudette is going to tell us what it is. Okay, Claudette, go ahead. Stand up, Claudette. New person. That's it. Has come. Wonderful. Let's 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 say it together. Let's say it together. And and this fits very well into our theme. You know, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. And. Brothers and sisters, this isn't just something for you to, th to say, okay, that's nice. It is to, to, for you to actually take it on board and allow it to be in your life. 
you know, it must pass through your brain and into your body. And that's, you know, the new has come. So when you feel those old things are coming back to you, say no, 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 no. The new is here. The old is gone. When we sing, I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace, I'm living in the kingdom of grace. The kingdom of grace. And whatever you may say, I am living in the kingdom of grace that has no borders. No borders. All right? And the memory verse for next week. Now, I'm going to be um, very naughty. Can anyone tell me what it is, uh, what the memory verse is for next week? <laughs> you remember the, uh, about the person who had a dream? And he says, actually, I'm not going to tell you what the dream is. And I want you to interpret it. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's get back here. I'm being silly. Uh, the memory verse for next week is Luke 24, 5. Let's say it to this. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? And this is the key point. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Can we say it again? In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's alive. He is alive. Wonderful. All right. Well, have we any birthdays coming this month? Or maybe yesterday was your birthday or today is your birthday. Is it your birthday today, Diane? This month. Okay. And Abigail, is your birthday. And your friends, is your birthday. Uh, um, we, you'll have to come back for the cake. Um, and, uh, <laughs> the cake will be served on the 16th, well, twice, on the 11th and on the 16th, okay? <laughs> Any other birthdays? I'm sorry, I wasn't looking over here. And Elaine, uh, yes. So we're going to sing happy birthday to you. If you'd like to stand up so we can sing happy birthday to you. If you have had a birthday, there is going to be your birthday this month. We want to sing happy birthday to you. Okay. Happy birthday. Is it, is it your birthday? Stand up, man. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friend. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. Have we any anniversaries this month? Any anniversaries coming up this month? All right. Anniversaries are always good times to remember, to give thanks, and to reflect. All right. It's an opportunity as we come together as God's family to share something of the goodness of God. And if, if you have a testimony you want to share, or an experience, a revelation that you feel will help us as a body, please come and share with us this morning. Okay. Well, we're going to move into a time of praise and worship. I'm sorry, did you have your hand up? Yes, please. Yes, yes, come and then you, you can. Uh, sorry, I, it, if, just, if, you, if I don't see you, just shout up because you know I'm. Yeah, so normally I thought if I go last, then I could go straight into worship. Okay. I just wanted to give a testimony that um, next week, the reason why I'm not here is that it's Easter Friday and my dad and brother are both getting baptized. So. <laughs> Um, my brother's been baptised before and he left, but ever since I've been born, my dad's never... His church was the pub and the bookies. Um, so the fact that he's, he's decided to... I, think, I don't know if it's during, the, during the, um, the lockdown, and I think my dad's always talking about the soaps he watches, you know, Emmerdale or um, Coronation Street. He blames my mum, but he watches it. And one day he says, I only watch Emmerdale and, and Coronation Street and EastEnders and John Hagee. And I was like, John Hagee? That's on the Good Channel. That's, that's when I first realised my dad was watching God TV. So when I heard he's getting baptised, that my, I don't know how, I'm, I'm sure I'll be crying, but just want to say that's my testimony. That thank God that once come, in fact, I realised a decade ago that my dad was a pastor's kid. 
Yes, when he left Jamaica, he left the Lord, but um, he's come back home, which is glad. But yeah, two sons have come back home, so that's my testimony. Okay, we're going to go into um, worship. <laughs> Yeah. 
a powerful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. And I'm so glad for today that we can come to God. We look to God for where our strength comes from because God is our shield. God is our rock. God is our strength. And we look to him today. Amen.
tired, but when we get to heaven, we'll have everlasting strength to keep singing forever. But at last, we must move on to the next song. <laughs> the next song is called Majesty. Worship His Majesty. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Almighty Father, we give you thanks and praise for this Palm Sunday and the privilege, dear God, of being here. As we enter, Father God, into Holy Week, 
Please turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Father God, stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise you with our lips, but also follow you all the way to the cross. Creating us, dear God, the desire to be more Christ-like, to spend more time in your word, and to seek you more in prayer about where we should be and what we should be doing. Strengthen us, dear God, to reach out to the lost world and to go the extra mile as Jesus did. Oh, Father God, help us to worship you and celebrate you in all that we do and to give the glory back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My help comes from 
Thank you, Cass. The psalm is Psalm 121. As they walked up to Jerusalem, and one of those going up, overwhelmed with his challenges, said, I look up to the hills. Where can I find help? And then another one came alongside him and says, my help. My help comes from the Lord. Do you need help? If you need help, the Lord is more than able and willing to help you. But you must come to him. Come to him. And so with your Bibles open, we go to the reading that Jean read to us. And the theme this afternoon is regime change. We've seen lots of that in recent times, even in our own country. Around the world, it's happening all the time. There are those who are quite jealous of other countries because of the regime that exists within their country and the lack of freedom that they have and opportunities. But there is one regime, my sisters and my brothers, that is the best. And he calls us to come to him and to join with him. As we reflect on Palm Sunday when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, it signaled something of the beginning of God being present here on earth among his people. Remember what Jesus said, when I leave you, I will not leave you alone, but I will send the comforter to be with you. God is here right in our midst this morning, this afternoon. You know, people respond to Jesus in a variety of ways. There are those who, when he came and he lived, they were very joyful. Why? Because they could see that he was indeed the promised Messiah. And there are those who betrayed him who were very close to him. And there were those who offered their lives to him. They saw, they believed, and they offered their lives. So seeing and believing that he is is not enough. You have to be prepared to commit yourself to him so that you may be part of the kingdom. In all countries of the world, one crucial thing is needed for you to travel, and that is your passport. It says a number of things about you, but above all, it says where you are from, who you are. I want to say to you this morning, if you want to get to heaven, make sure that you've, your passport is in date, that it is sorted out, or you're not going to get there. You see, when he comes, he brings challenges. He brings challenge to some of the things that we hold most dearly to our hearts. You remember what he said to the rich young ruler? Go and sell everything and give it to the poor. I'm sorry, that's too much. I can't do that. What is it he's asking you to do that you're not prepared to do? If you say he's Lord, then he must be Lord of everything. Not just the things that doesn't matter, but Lord of everything. In verse 38, it says, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, of our reading, there were those who said, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But we are so fickle. Just a few days later, crucify him. But let's focus on that day. Blessed is he who comes, he said. Is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. So they were crowning him. He's a king. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. During the lifetime of Jesus, the Roman Empire controlled the entire Mediterranean area and also Israel. So the Romans were in power during that time. And anyone who seeks to usurp that power would be in difficulties. So the fact that they proclaim to say, blessed is the king. King? How can we have two kings? But the important thing is, my brothers, my sisters, Christ didn't come to establish that kind of geographical earthly kingdom as some who would have expected. Because there were the group that were called the zealots, and they were hoping that Jesus would 
take control. They didn't tolerate any nonsense. They believed in the Jewish nation, and that's it. You know, they felt that's the one, the most important thing as far as that was concerned. He says, they were very aggressive politically. You could say they were nationals. They, they guard the Jewish lifestyle, and they still do exist. And they despised any, even the own Jewish people who sought to make some kind of peace or conciliation with the Roman leaders. Don't make any peace with them. We want to throw them out. And so they saw Jesus as the one who would come and lead them and expel the Romans and establish this kingdom. But that wasn't Jesus' plan. It wasn't. Then you have, you know, the group that was called the Essenes. Now, the Essenes, they were, you could say, they were a separatist group. And some of them, they form ascetic monasteries, like, we, like what we know as monks. And they formed these communities, and they went out, and they lived in the desert of Judea. They shared their material things. And they occupied themselves with discipline, study, with worship, and with work. There's nothing wrong with that. But they felt that they were the one, you know, they were the one who really were at the forefront of spirituality. They actually practice ritual baptism. So when Jesus baptized, when John baptized Jesus, it wasn't anything strange, you know, it was part of a lot of groups. They ate their food together in a common, in a communal way. They shared their food together. And some of them didn't get married. They, they think, you know, the purer I can be, the better it is. Some of them actually believed in immortality, but they didn't believe in the resurrection of the physical body as the Pharisees did. And they believed in divine punishment. They observed the law of Moses just as the Pharisees did. And they also observed the Sabbath. And ritual purity was a big thing among the Essene group. Yes, they saw themselves as the elect of Israel. We are your spiritual father, and, and yes, we will lead the way. Then you had another group. And sometimes we joke when we're in college, you say, you know, they were sad, you see. You said, you see the Sadducees you said, you know, they were sad, you see. <laughs> Uh, but the Sadducees was actually, they were the upper class people. They were the party of the high priests. And they worked within the temple. And they were from the aristocratic families. And they were the merchants. They were the rich people. So a lot of the people, you see, you know that Jews are known for being rich and, and trading and jewelers. They are from that group, from the Sadducees group. They had good relationships with the Romans. They felt that it is important to keep good relationships with the ruler so that they can do what they needed to do. And then you have the Pharisees. They were the keepers of the Mosaic law, the Torah. They made sure that it was kept. But not only that, they added so many laws. Everything was prescribed for. What you could do, when you could do it, how you could do it, everything. You know, so their, their role was to preserve the Mosaic law, to add to it, and to a certain extent, what they did, they, they, if a situation arises, they would make a law about it. Because the people needed to know what they could do, when they could do it, and how it would impact them. And so those were the main religious groups within Judaism that existed, but there are a plethora of other religions around the time. But remember, Christ came into that situation. And all these groups are saying, we are, we are the right one, we are the right one, this is the way for you to go. But Jesus came with a new mission. He came to change all that whole idea. Because every one of these groups, because of what, how they established themselves, they excluded others from their groups. And so, my sisters, my brothers, because they did that, 
it was difficult for anyone, for anyone to get fully into an understanding and not tied up into knots with all kinds of things. And so, you see, it was into this setting that Jesus came and he brought a new message about huma human relationships with God and one another. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 to 18, this is what it says. Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. In chapter 2, 14 to 18. He says, for he, Jesus, himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. The two groups that Paul speaks of here were the Jews and the Gentiles. If you weren't a Jew, you're a Gentile. And Paul says, Christ himself has broken down this wall, the dividing wall of hostility that says, you are over there and we are over there. And even with, among the Jews, there were, as I've outlined to you, a variety of groups that say, we are the right group, we are the right group. He says, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, he says. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two. That's making peace. And that is God's plan. To create one new humanity out of the world that we are one in Christ. This new kingdom of God that is not limited by geographical boundaries or ethnicity. This is the new kingdom that he came to establish. And he says, and in, he says, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross. By which he put to death their hostility. He put to that their hostility. He said, he came and he preached peace to you who were far away, to the Gentiles, and to those who were near, the Jews. For through him we both have access to the Father by the Spirit. It's not an easy thing. For, it wasn't an easy thing and still is not an easy thing for the Jews to feel that somehow this seemingly special relationship they had with God no lo is no longer you know, valued. You know, the other day I, I found... 40 pounds in one of my suits, four old 10 pound notes. I thought, wow, I must have been rich then to have had 40 pounds and forgotten about it. But it was, it was no longer valid. I couldn't take it to a shop and spend it. It was no longer valid. But fortunately, I was able to take it to my own bank and put it into my account. But there's coming a time when it will no longer be valid. The thing is, you see, we must act when the opportunity is there to enter into the kingdom of God. They cried prophetically, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, what is this new kingdom that Jesus was bringing in? Let's go to Daniel chapter 2 and 44. This is what Daniel said in his prophecy. He says, he was speaking about a variety of kings and kingdoms, what was happening. And he says, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end. But it will, but it will itself endure forever. So my sisters and my brothers, the church of God will not come to an end. Kingdoms will rise and fall, but the church of God will stand forever. Because he himself is our peace and our security and our God. And he came to establish the kingdom of God. Jesus entering into Jerusalem was a pivotal point in the course of events that marked the manifestation of God being God in the world. Jesus did things that no one else had done. And they could see how God was working. He forgave, he healed, he restored, he brought death back to life. I want us to move to verse 41 of our reading of Luke 19. Let's just take a moment. What are the things that brought tears to your eyes?
when those who are close to you are harm or hurt, or you can see ahead the things they're doing and what the end might be, when you cannot provide for them, when you, when you feel helpless, as he approached Jerusalem and he saw the city, the beautiful city of Jerusalem, and what it stood for, but for the people, he says, he wept over it. This tells us a number of things, that our God is not a God without compassion, without empathy. Our God is not a God who is far removed from all the things that we're going through, but is a God who's ever present in our situation. And that our God is not a controlling God. He's not a dictator. He has given us freedom. And when we exercise freedom and invite him into our lives, he does amazing things. And though he, could, he can see ahead and would wish that we would not have to suffer, he has made a way, but we have to access that way. This is the new kingdom. And it is here for us to enter into so that we might be saved, not only from the present situation, but from the future. And then he said in verse 42, he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, do you know what would bring you peace? I was at a meeting yesterday, um, fellow ministers meeting, and we were discussing some issues and a point, something arose and one of the ministers, he was, say, he was going on and he was saying, oh, you know, I don't know and I'm concerned. And, and I said to him, what is it that's bothering you? And he said, I don't know. And I'm thinking, okay, we've discussed this matter openly and all the points are there for you to see and yet you're saying you don't know what it is that's bothering you? Yet, there is that. Some of us are searching and we don't know what we're searching for. Because we don't know that actually there is a place within our lives in our, that nothing else can fill but God. And when that place is empty or vacant, there is some, a need that we cannot fully express, but we know we need something. And so Jesus was saying that you people who are running here and running there and doing this and doing that, if only you know what would bring you peace, then you would act and you could have peace. But, says, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Now it is hidden from your eyes. Now, do you think he was saying, I'm hiding this from your eyes? Sometimes we need to take time to step back from the things that are in our lives to say, hey, just hold on a minute. That is why it is important for us to learn how to reflect and to step away from, to take time out, to, to, you know, to pause and to look at life and ask the question, what is life all about? What is all this about? And then it is then we can begin to understand and to explore the meaning. In, in John 3, 16, this verse, is, you, you all know what it says. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever... You see, this is the nature of the kingdom, okay? All right, you know, yes, you can come in, if, in into the kingdom if you are from... No. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Apply, believe in him. And if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. Male, female, black, white, rich, poor. It's the same path you have to come. There are no special gates for you to come in if you're a Jew or if you are poor or if you're rich. No, it's the one gate through Jesus Christ. And so let me tell you, brothers and sisters, don't listen to those who tell you that you have to go here or go there or do this or do that. Don't listen to those who tell you you have to wear trousers or you have to wear hats. It has nothing to do with those things. It has to do with faith in the living word of God that has been revealed to us through Jesus Christ. And when you take his word to heart and allow it to filter into your life and begin to produce the fruits of Christ, it is then you will know it. And no one will need to tell you because you will know it. And you will have that desire and that passion for the word of God. And you'll know it isn't because you're good enough, but it's because God loves you. With an everlasting love. 
and he calls you to himself to be his child. But you have to come. When he calls you, you have to come. Sometimes we're so deaf. You know, when I was a boy in Jamaica and my grandma used to send me to the shop, I would go, when I leave the house, I would be playing with my friends and it's only when I hear her calling, Gleno! You know? <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> and God is calling some of you now and you're not listening. And it might be too late. He said, come, come to me. In John chapter 3 and verse 1 to 6, let's just look at this. Now, you're very familiar with this story of Nicodemus. He was one of the, the rulers there, so he probably was, he, he was I, I think, he, so he must have been a Pharisee, actually. Yes, he was a Pharisee, yes. <laughs> now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For, he says, no one could perform the signs you, you're doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now you see, he challenged the Pharisaic way of being righteous. He says, okay, you're a Pharisee, you're responsible for the, you're the custodian of the law, and you tell people how they should live in order to be in a right relationship with God. But I'm telling you, you Pharisee, unless you're born again, you cannot even see the kingdom of God. In other words, you won't understand it. You cannot experience it. Living a religious life, I don't speak about religion, you know, I speak about a relationship. A relationship with the living God who communes with you wherever you are and enables and empowers you. Now, what was Nicodemus' response? Verse 4, he says, how can someone be born when they are old? Now, he was an intelligent man, because if you to be a Pharisee, to be able to codify the laws and keep it, you have to have something up here. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. <laughs> Jesus said to him here, said, Jesus asked him, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. What did this mean? You see, he understood the ritual washing that existed among a variety of groups that symbolizes cleansing. But the cleansing that Jesus speaks is that which comes from God when you come to him and you open your life and he gives you forgiveness. And then put his spirit within you so you come alive. He said flesh, and this is speaking up, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. He says, the spirit gives birth to the spirit. And so, it is, that is how we enter into this new kingdom of God. That we are born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit into the kingdom of God, my sisters and brothers. He said, you must be born again. As I conclude this morning, I just want us to journey together with Romans chapter 10, verse 15 to 13. Because you see, this is the kingdom that Christ came to inaugurate, and it is still strong. And there are thousands who are coming to faith. There are millions who are already at home with the Lord. And our responsibility is so to live the life that others might, we, to open the door and say, come in, to live our lives in such a way that we're an open book. So when people engage with us, they will know that there is a kingdom. That we enter here on earth by our free will, but God takes us to places we would never dream. Moses, he says, Paul writing um, there in Rome, in, in Rome said, Moses writes this about the, righteous that is by, the righteousness that is by the law. He says, person who does these things will live by them, by the law. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead, he says. Verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. The word, the living word, Christ is near you. He gives you understanding and revelation that there is a God who loves you and that you need to respond. The word is near you, he says. It is in your mouth and in your heart. You know what to say. You know what to do. You feel it. That is, he says, the message concerning faith that we proclaim. And then he says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will enter into the kingdom of God. It's no good feeling it and knowing what to do. You must do it. And when you do it sincerely, you will be saved, he says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. Pause a moment. When he said your heart, he speaks not of that physical pump that keep, turns the blood around to keep us alive, but that central being of yourself. You know when you feel something deeply, you feel it here. Right in the center of your being, your soul, that's where you feel it. He says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. Meaning that when you believe God, Christ put you in a right relationship with God, giving you access to the throne of God, giving you a new name, that I am now a child of God. And God has paid all my, all that I owed, he paid for it. And I now can live a new life. And he says, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So if you believe, you must speak it and live it. Verse 11, please. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jews, Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. That universal nature again, you know, it's, it's inclusive. All who call on him. He says, for everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. That verse connects up with John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you enter into the kingdom of God. One of my colleagues yesterday was saying that his daughter is married to a Brazilian. And he's saying that he has two citizenships. His wife has two citizenships. But his daughter has three citizenships. I wonder how many citizenships you have. I have three. I'm a Jamaican, I'm British, and I'm from the heavenly, and I'm a citizen of heaven. And if we turn it the way I was a Jamaican, then I was a citizen of heaven, then I was British. And if you ask me to give up any, the one I will not give up is being a citizen of heaven. I'll give everything else up, but not as a citizen of heaven. Because my sisters, my brothers, when you have nothing, or when everything else goes, and you hold on to your Lord, you can be confident that God will be there. So, the entrance into Jerusalem marked, was pivotal in God establishing his kingdom here on earth to say that all can come and to break down all those walls that separated people, those who feel, oh, I could never do like that. I could never be that. I could, and, you know, Oh, I don't have enough wisdom. Because there was the wisdom groups as well. Secretive groups who think, oh, you can only find God if you're very clever. Or if you're very rich, if you have a lot to offer. All you have to do is to hear the word and respond and to allow the word of God to be in you and you can be confident that you'll be saved. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for entering into our lives. For giving us the opportunity to experience what it truly be, means to be alive in you. As we enter into this week, reflecting on what you went through, Lord Jesus, all because of your love for us. Help us to be willing to give all to you. So we may journey with you and be the light to the world around us. If you're here this morning and you've never taken that step of faith, maybe it's an opportunity for you to do so. As we sing our next, our closing song, leave your place if you want to give your heart to the Lord and come and sit on the front row. And I will just share with you the good news. Remember that free gift that God has given to you. I'm not going to force you. I would never do that. It's too precious. But if you've heard the message and you know you need to take that step, then now is the time. Now is the time to make that decision. Let's stand together as we sing our concluding hymn.
You're altogether wonderful, Lord, and you're wonderful to me. My prayer is that all of us will be able to say you're wonderful to me. We thank you for what you have done and continue to do. We pray that we will not dim your light, Lord, but allow your light to shine through us and bring hope to a lost world. Send us out with a message of hope, the message of life and love, Give us victory, Lord. Stabilize us, Lord. And help us to know that you are walking with us every step of the way. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you and go with you. We meet this evening at 6.30 for our session right here. Please come and join us. We have just a one-item church meeting, so if you could just take your seats for a moment, it will be no more than 10 minutes maximum. And so...